My, my, my vision and my passion is to improve uh, the availability of communications networks uh, for everyone, including uh, those of you uh, that are in this room. Um, what we don't often see uh, when we're using um, communications networks is that there are actually humans uh, working very hard to keep those networks up for us. Um, improving availability actually involves <coughs> things. It involves uh, preventing downtime, right? preventing um, it also involves helping these operators um, fix the network when downtime occurs. Right? So I work on both of these things. Today I'm going to mostly talk about the second because that's what uh, the National Science Foundation has funded me to do through the career program. Um, so what I try to do is to um, improve availability um, in the face of faults, that is devices failing, misconfiguration, that is operators uh, messing up, if you will. Um, and also malice, right? Uh, bad players uh, coming to uh, play, if you will, on the network. Um, this is important, of course, because uh, as we all know, communications networks are becoming increasingly more ubiquitous. Um, with that ubiquity comes complexity, right? The network is growing. As it grows, we need to understand how it works better so that when these faults occur, we can fix them. Um, and just like the real world, as everyone's coming to use the network, that also means uh, bad people are coming to use the network as well. People who want to make a quick dollar, spammers, um, scammers, people who want your personal information, etc. So one of the things that I focus a lot on is um, identifying and eliminating those, those types of bad players. Um, the National Science Foundation funded me for a um, um, for research vision that basically recognizes that when network operators are trying to achieve these goals, they really only have a partial picture of the network. Uh, the internet as we think of it is composed of tens of thousands of independently operated networks. So you have people who are trying to keep up bits and pieces of it, the whole thing has to work um, so that we can use it. Um, on the other hand, we're all sitting at the edge of the network saying, yeah, this isn't really working as I expected. Right? So the, the idea behind uh, the research agenda is to say, what if we could automatically gather a lot of that information at the edge of the network that you and I are seeing and pass that somehow back uh, to where the network operators can make better use of it and uh, reduce the downtime in the face of false misconfiguration and, and malice. Um, one particular uh, aspect of that that I've worked on, for, uh, which probably uh, we all know a little bit about, is spam. Um, so the traditional way of fighting this is to look at the content of a message, what's actually in there, what the message says. The problem with that is um, as people try to, uh, to update their filtering mechanisms, um, spammers can change the content to evade those filters. So what I've done is actually instead say, what if we could look at the behavior of, of how the spammers are sending those messages, um, which is a little bit more difficult to change than the messages themselves. You can kind of think of it, um, to use an analogy like telemarketers, right? You know that those guys are always going to call between 5 and 7, right, at dinner time. Right? So um, spammers, right, you don't even have to pick up the phone to know what the message is going to be. So I, I apply a similar analogy to communications networks, right? Without even looking at the message, you can tell um, just in, in how it was sent that it might likely be spam. Um, the, there are many advantages to this, but one of them is that um, there's hope that we can stop spam inside the network before it actually reaches uh, your inboxes. Okay, so um, I'd just like to conclude uh, with some thanks uh, that has helped me uh, along this path and has, has made this research possible. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank the National Science Foundation, um, not only for this award um, and for the funding that, that made uh, this research possible, but also for um, unwavering encouragement to pursue this line of research. Um, in particular, I'd like to thank uh, several program managers, Carl Levitt uh, from the CyberTrust um, program, um, and Allison Mankin, um, both of whom not only have encouraged me to, to, uh, to pursue this work, but also have provided me with con uh, concrete technical feedback. I'd also like to thank uh, Ralph Wachter and uh, uh, Darlene Fisher, who have also helped me quite a lot in this work. Um, next, I'd like to thank my advisor, Ari Balakrishnan, who um, 
really encouraged me to um, pursue new ways of looking at problems, um, in particular, um, you can see that a little bit in this work. Um, and not only um, has he really guided me along my research path, but he's also uh, one of the most phenomenal people I know. He's taught me a lot of life lessons that I, that I carry with me. Um, I'd also like to thank um, one of my mentors uh, for my postdoc, Jennifer Rexford, um, and also my department chair, Ellen Segura, who has helped me a lot in, uh, in my early career at Georgia Tech. Um, I'd like to thank uh, the students who made a lot of this research possible, in particular um, one student, Anirudh Ramachandran, who actually got me interested in this work in the first place. Uh, in a previous life in grad school, I was not working on this topic. Um, I'd like to thank the senior faculty at Georgia Tech who have, who have smoothed the bumps along the way. Um, and lastly, I'd like to thank uh, my family and my friends who have, uh, who have really made, uh, have, have made my life easy so that I can, that I can pursue this research. Um, I'd like to in particular thank uh, my mother who is here today and also my grandmother who is not here today who really made, uh, um, encouraged me to pursue this career path. Um, and I'd also like to thank uh, my father who always taught me to pursue truth and I think in many ways that's what research is about. Thank you.